Coming up on Arirang News, South Korea confirms hundreds more cases of the coronavirus, bringing the total to 2022. The authorities are testing and quarantining thousands of people from the religious group Shincheonji, which is at the center of the main outbreak. The South Korean government is getting ready to spend billions of dollars from an extra budget to help people affected, including small businesses and people who've been unable to go to work. And the World Health Organization is confident that the virus can still be contained. The outbreak is at a decisive point, it says, but the WHO isn't ready to call the disease a pandemic. It's 4 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whitey. South Korea is seeing a surge in coronavirus cases now at more than 2,000. With the latest, our Lee kyung is on the line. So, kyung the health authorities confirmed hundreds more infections today. That's right. South Korea confirmed 427 more cases on Friday. This brings the total number of cases in the country to 2,022. The figure has nearly doubled in just over three days, and that 2,000 mark has been surpassed in just 39 days since South Korea confirmed its first case on January 20th. More than 80 percent of the new cases are in the southeastern city of Daegu and the surrounding Gyeongsangbuk-do province. Daegu alone has more than 1,300 cases. Also, the 15th Infantry Division of the South Korean Army in Daegu is under lockdown, or the so-called cohort quarantine, after one of its trainees was found to be a member of the religious group Shincheonji. That group has been the source of the massive rising cases in the past couple of days. It is unclear whether the trainee is infected, but he has been quarantined in hospital and is waiting for his test result. Some 15 other trainees who shared the building with the man are quarantined in the individual rooms. As of Friday afternoon, the death toll stands at 13, the same as yesterday. On Thursday, a 74-year-old man from Daegu was confirmed dead. He was also a member of Shincheonji religious group. So as you say, the major clusters are cases coming from Daegu, and many are linked to the religious group Shincheonji. How's the government dealing with the rapid spread in that community? The Korean government is tracking down all Shincheonji's followers. It has obtained a complete list of the group's roughly 310,000 members. This includes an additional list of some 60,000 people considered to be in the group's initiation process. The government has identified one-third of those members, among whom some 1,600 people are found to have symptoms and are currently under self-quarantine. Another 1,200 are waiting for their test results. As you said, many cases are coming from this particular religious group. Those cases began with the country's 31st patient, a Shincheonji follower who was confirmed to have the virus in Daegu on February 18th. Since then, the number of confirmed cases in the country has skyrocketed. The 61-year-old woman attended Shincheonji services twice in the 10 days before she was confirmed to be infected. Devin? All right, Lee kyung reporting there. Thank you for that. Now, President Moon Jae-in is meeting with the leaders of South Korea's four main political parties for discussions on the COVID-19 outbreak. They're expected to share the latest developments and measures to curb the spread. They'll also talk about ways to minimize the economic fallout, including the drawing up of a supplementary budget. Today's meeting is the first such gathering to take place at the National Assembly since President Moon took office, a move aimed at showing his determination to seek bipartisan support to tackle the outbreak. Prior to the talks, President Moon held talks with National Assembly Speaker Moon Hee Sang. And more and more countries are restricting entry from South Korea to deal with some cases where people have been treated unreasonably. South Korea's foreign minister says the government is stepping up efforts on the diplomatic front. Our Hong Yoo reports. Fifty countries are restricting the entry of people traveling from South Korea, either through stronger quarantine measures or outright entry bans, as of Friday morning. This is an increase of five countries from Thursday. The Comoros, an island group off the east of Africa, has become the 25th country to ban people traveling from South Korea from entering its territory. And 25 other countries have strengthened their entrance screening procedures. Croatia, Ukraine, Iceland and Bosnia are the latest to up their screenings. Croatia is conducting a 6- to 10-hour quarantine on visitors who have been in South Korea or China in the last two weeks. And Iceland has ordered travelers from South Korea to self-quarantine and avoid contact with others. Despite more countries imposing entry bans, South Korea's foreign minister Kang Kyung-hwa said on Thursday that diplomatic efforts are underway to tackle such issues. 
We have strongly protested to some governments that took such measures without prior notice. Our diplomatic missions are actively negotiating with other countries, so we don't see any more situations that may baffle our nationals. She added that even as confirmed COVID-19 cases are on the rise, the assessment by the international community and the WHO is that they trust South Korea's capacity to deal with the outbreak. Hong Yu, Arirang News. The U.S. has also raised its travel advisory for South Korea, urging Americans not to come here. But President Trump says it's not the time yet to stop Koreans from coming into the United States. Kim do reports. The U.S. Department of State now wants U.S. travelers to reconsider traveling to South Korea due to the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak. It raised its travel advisory for South Korea from Level 2 to Level 3 on Wednesday on its four-tier travel alert system, which means to avoid non-essential travel as there is widespread community transmission. Other countries affected by the virus also receive new levels. The epicenter of the outbreak, China, is at Level 4, which is a do-not-travel warning from the U.S. government to its citizens, while Mongolia is at 3 on the same level as South Korea while Italy and Japan are two where travelers are advised to exercise increased caution. Just hours earlier, at a coronavirus news conference in the White House, U.S. President Donald Trump was asked whether he would restrict travelers from South Korea and Italy entering the country. President Trump said, although he may consider doing so, this just isn't the right time. He stressed that his administration is doing well in dealing with the coronavirus, as they have tightened screening and quarantine measures. But we're very, very ready for this, for anything, whether it's going to be a uh, breakout of larger proportions or whether or not we're, uh, you know, we're at that very low level. And uh, we want to keep it that way. So we're at The U.S. president said America is rapidly developing vaccines and is working with other countries to contain the virus. Mr. Trump charged Vice President Mike Pence with leading the U.S. coronavirus response and said his administration is working with Congress for financial support to battle the coronavirus. The amount of money is expected to be at least 2.5 billion U.S. dollars and as much as 8 billion. Kim Do-yeon, Arirang News. The WHO has been calling on countries to be prepared for what might be coming in terms of the virus, but it's still not ready to call COVID-19 a pandemic. Lee Sung Jae has this report. Despite the World Health Organization refraining from using the word pandemic to describe the situation, the UN Health Agency's chief says the COVID-19 outbreak is at a decisive point. We're at a decisive point point. For the past two days, the number of new cases reported in the rest of the world has exceeded the number of new cases reported from China. Our message continues to be that this virus has pandemic potential, and WHO is providing the tools to help every country to prepare accordingly. The term pandemic is used when an infectious disease spreads easily from person to person in many parts of the world. The COVID-19 outbreak has so far infected people in 50 countries and territories, and more than 4,000 cases have been confirmed outside of mainland China. However, the WHO continues to reiterate that it's too early to call the outbreak a pandemic, but rather called on countries to be in a phase of preparedness. Despite the rising number of cases in South Korea, Italy and Iran, the WHO chief remains optimistic the virus can be contained. The epidemics in the Islamic Republic of Iran, Italy and the Republic of Korea demonstrate what this virus is capable of. But this virus is not influenza. With the right measures, it can be contained. The director general added that it's not time to be scared, but time to take action to prevent infections and save lives. Lee Seung Jae, Arirang News. Meanwhile, in China, 327 new confirmed cases as of Thursday, bringing the total number of infections to 78,824. 
China's National Health Commission said today that the country added 44 new deaths on Thursday, bringing the death toll to 2,788. In Hong Kong, a coronavirus patient's dog has tested, quote, weak positive for the virus. However, Hong Kong's agricultural department said today that the dog had not shown any symptoms and there was no evidence to suggest that pets could contract the virus or infect people. Italy announced five more deaths on Thursday, bringing the total to 17. There are 650 confirmed cases in Italy so far, making it the country with the highest number of infections in Europe. Other countries, including Greece, Denmark and Spain, have reported infections linked to Italy. The French president said the country is facing a crisis, as it reported 38 confirmed cases and two deaths so far. Meanwhile, in Iran, one of the country's vice presidents tested positive for the virus. More than two dozen deaths there now. Israel has also confirmed another case, apparently contracted in Italy. Our Yoon Jung-min has the details. Iran's vice president for women and family affairs, Masume Ebtikar, was confirmed to have been infected by the coronavirus. She is the latest official to be infected, and the country's deputy health minister is also confirmed to have the virus. The number of confirmed cases in Iran has reached 245. The death toll has risen to 26, the highest outside of China. The outbreak has prompted authorities to call off Friday prayers in Tehran and other cities. Iran's state news agency said the country has banned Chinese citizens from entering. Meanwhile, Israel confirmed on Thursday that a man who had recently returned from Italy tested positive. It said it was barring non-Israelis from entering the country if they had visited Italy in the past two weeks. Unfortunately, this morning we identified the first um, traveler from Italy in Israel uh, who, who, who is diagnosed with cor the coronavirus. In general, we add Italy to the list of countries from which we decided that foreigners will not enter Israel. Before the new case, two Israeli passengers on the virus strike and cruise ship Diamond Princess had tested positive. Israel has already issued entry bans on non-Israelis who had been in South Korea, China, Japan or several other affected countries over the previous two weeks. Yoon Jong-min, Arirang News. To help local businesses now struggling because of the coronavirus, the South Korean government has unveiled its first economic relief package. The government's going to pour billions of dollars into the economy with measures like bringing back the so-called spending coupons and lowering rents for small businesses. Kim Dami has the details. The government is injecting its 13 billion U.S. dollars of emergency funds to help ease the burden that the outbreak is having on the economy. Finance Minister Hong nam -gi said that as well as these emergency funds, the government will use its supplementary budget to help people and businesses suffering due to the outbreak. He added that although the size of this supplementary budget is yet to be confirmed, it will definitely be larger than the extra budget during the MERS outbreak in 2015, which was a little over $5 billion. And that extra budget bill, according to Hong, will be sent to parliament next week. As widely expected, the government is also reintroducing the so-called spending coupons, which were last used in 2009. They'll be introduced in five areas, including tourism and family care, to encourage consumption. If workers take family care leave to look after their children under 8 years old, the government will provide up to $400 per couple. Vacation coupons worth up to $330 will be dished out to around 120,000 people traveling within the country in the latter half of the year. And tax on car purchases will be cut by 70 percent. The government will also continue to support small businesses by allowing more people to take out loans. On Thursday, the finance minister also pledged to share the cost of rent discounts with landlords during the first half of the year. To lift the rent burden on small businesses and merchants, so-called kind landlords nationwide are voluntarily collecting less rent from their small business tenants. The government's plan is to give landlords a tax deduction of 50 percent of the discount they give their tenants. This will apply regardless of the landlord's total income or the size of the rent discount. 
To tighten quarantine measures against the virus, the government will hand out 7 million free masks in Daegu and in Chongdo, Gyeongsangbuk-do province. Kim Dami, Arirang News. Industrial output across all sectors in South Korea edged up last month, but consumption and investment fell sharply. Statistics Korea said Friday that overall industrial output rose 0.1 percent on month, but consumption plunged by more than 3 percent, the biggest monthly fall since February 2011. Production in the mining, manufacturing and gas sectors fell 1.3 percent from the month before, while production in the service sector edged up less than half a percent. Production in the semiconductor, finance and insurance sectors rose, but the machinery sector went down. The figures, however, do not take into account the impact of the coronavirus, so the prospects for February look even bleaker. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Uwanta Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you as always for coming on today. Thank you for having me today. Well, stocks in the U.S. got absolutely slammed on Thursday, the Dow falling by the most in history in terms of points. It was a decline of more than 4 percent. The coronavirus fear uh, really starting to hit the markets now. What's the story, Mr. Yu? Yes. As you said, um, global equity market tumbled in the last one-week period. Uh, if you look at the MSCI World Index ETF prices, uh, it fell from the peak to now 11 percent uh, in a very short period of time over one week. Uh, clearly, this is putting a dent to most of the equity market, uh, including U.S. Uh, if you look at the U.S. equity market, uh, from the peak to bottom, um, the S&P is down about 12.2 percent. NASDAQ is down also over 12 percent. Uh, clearly, this has been the biggest severe decline that we've seen. Um, and if you look at the uh, greed and fear index that we look at, uh, we are in a panic mode, a so-called a fear index, uh, extreme fear level, uh, which is now at around 13 level. Um, so uh, clearly the concern about the COVID-19 spreading to not just China, but other part of the region, including the U.S., has uh, made a significant concern uh, for the equity market. Uh, people are worried about the global uh, recession and uh, whether or not this coronavirus will have a long-term impact. Uh, clearly, uh, this is a panic period. However, though, if we look at the uh, fixed index and various other uh, measures that we look at, we are clearly in a panic selling uh, territory. Uh, technically, any time soon we can see a rebound. So uh, we shouldn't be too negative at this point in time, given the fact that the uncertainty has already priced in into most of the uh, equity market that we look at. Well, uh, Korean stocks sort of followed suit today. Uh, we're now down, down below 2,000 points. Uh, what happened today in the local market, and how bad is this going to get? Yes, um, as you said, Kospi has uh, fallen below 2000 once again. Uh, if you look at from the uh, 2018 bottom, uh, we've seen it, this is the third time. Um, clearly, the decline of the prices has been quite severe. Uh, the peak recently was in January. Uh, it went up as high as 2277. Now it's, we are at 1987. So clearly, more than uh, almost 300 points decline. So if you calculate that, that is more than 13% decline from the peak to bottom. Uh, the main reason for this is that uh, people are uncertain about the policies as well as the uh, government uh, stance on this. Uh, if we look at the Fed, uh, sorry, uh, Bank of Korea decision, uh, they did not decide to lower interest rate, uh, saying that whether or not interest rate cut is not going to help uh, the consumption, which I'm not sure whether that is the right way of doing it. But nevertheless, obviously, uh, much expected uh, rate cut did not happen. So therefore, people were panicking. Um, now, if you look at just today, Kospi is down 3.3 percent, 
Kostak is down 4.3%. Uh, I think that most of these decline is already pricing in Korea's economic growth rate for this year to fall sharply from uh, last year's about 2% to uh, below 1.6%. Um, maybe the pricing in is, is already that is it's even lower than 1.6 percent at this point in time. Well, meanwhile, the exchange rate, uh, we're still at well over 1,201 to the dollar. The Korean currency is weakened by several percent uh, during this outbreak. Where do you see the one going? Right. Um, once again, I think that the uh, Bank of Korea deciding not to cut interest rate was one of the reasons why the uh, interest rates, uh, sorry, the uh, exchange rates were falling so rapidly to the 12-15 uh, level. So they were thinking that maybe foreign investors were selling uh, rapidly because of the currency movement. Uh, but if you look at the, uh, the commentary coming out from the overseas, uh, it says that uh, Korea unexpectedly holds the base rate, or Bank of Korea unexpectedly kept its base rate. This is the comments coming out from the overseas. Uh, clearly, I think that uh, we have lost some of the trust uh, from the foreign investors whether or not uh, the proper policies will be made to contain this and also able to increase the uh, GDP growth rate. Uh, we have seen a continuation of slowdown in the GDP growth rate, and we saw barely above 2% growth rate last year. And this year, if we're seeing another decline to 1.6%, Clearly, people are concerned about what will happen to the currencies. Um, so even though we did not lower the interest rate, um, we saw a, a, a uh, credibility issues occurred. And therefore, once again, the Korean won has depreciated today to 12.15.7. Uh, yesterday, it slightly appreciated to uh, about 12.13 level or so, but it seems that uh, rate cut did not happen, doesn't really help out for the time being. Uh, hopefully, we will see more aggressive measure coming from the government and uh, more correlated efforts to boost the economy. And if that actually occurs, and we hope that that will come through over the next uh, few weeks, uh, then we will see currency stabilizing around 1,200 level. Uh, I think that intrinsically right fair uh, exchange rate should be well below 1,200. But at this point in time, people are still uncertain about the, what's the, going to be the implication of the coronavirus. Yes, indeed. And we'll have to keep a close eye on all of this throughout the outbreak as it develops. We'll have to leave it there for today, though. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. You too. And uh, K-pop megastars BTS, we now hear, are canceling their concerts in Seoul because of the coronavirus outbreak. That was announced today by the group's management agency, Big Hit Entertainment, which said the concerts scheduled for April are now off. The agency said they had to cancel them for the safety of fans, the band, and their staff. Some 2,000, 200,000 BTS fans had booked tickets for those four nights. And the people treating coronavirus patients and testing people are putting themselves at risk of infection. Other people getting checked are also worried. So to keep the virus out of hospitals and clinics, South Korea has made it possible for people to get tested for the virus in their cars. Our Choi won jo tells us more. It usually takes almost an hour to get tested for the coronavirus at local medical centers. On top of the time-consuming process, there are concerns over the spread of the virus among possible patients gathering at the centers. The so-called drive-through coronavirus testing facility gives people that peace of mind and much-needed efficiency. Without having to leave their car, people can get their body temperature and respiratory symptoms checked in their seat. If there are no significant symptoms, they can simply exit the facility. For people with the virus symptoms, it takes less than 10 minutes to take a clinical sample. I came here after waiting for about an hour at a health center. It's much faster and more convenient. People should remain in self-quarantine for the two days it takes to get their test results. Koyang City also offers a facility for people to stay if they request it. We can prevent the spread of the virus from patients with possible infections. Plus, this measure is very effective as it protects medical staff. Currently running the drive through service from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, Koyang City is considering expanding the center's opening times as well as a number of drive through testing centers across the city. Choi won
아래랑 뉴스. 시청해주셔서 감사합니다.